Good evening and welcome to our webinar. My name is Michelle Cabral and I'm the Senior Marketing Manager at 3Shape. On behalf of 3Shape and 3D BioCAD, I would like to personally thank you for joining our evening tonight as we're discussing chairside restoration uh, with Same Day Dentistry. And our webinar is going to start with a presentation from Dr. Michael Park, followed by a live demo of our Trios Design Studio from Jack from 3D BioCAD. And lastly, we'll go over our promotions with John from 3D BioCAD. Due to the large audience, your mics will be muted. So we ask that you please use the chat functionality below to post all your questions. At the end of the presentation, we will be using the last 15 minutes to answer all of your questions. I would like to introduce Dr. Michael Park, who is a board certified prosthodontist and periodontist in Canada. Dr. Park received his DDS degree from the University of Alberta, and he completed his prosthodontics and periodontics training at Boston University, Henry M. Golden School of Dental Medicine. Dr. Park maintains a full private practice in periodontics, fixed prosthodontics, and implant dentistry. Welcome, Dr. Michael Park. Hello, everyone. Can you guys hear me okay? Okay, good, good, good. All right. Uh, I would like to welcome you to today's webinar. Uh, my name is Mike Park. I'm a periodontist uh, and a prosthodontist. Today's topic is digital dentistry, same day indirect restorations. So today I would like to share with you uh, the digital workflow and the clinical workflow of doing chair side same day indirect restorations and also share some uh, clinical tips and some experience with you guys. So this is the uh, conventional indirect restoration workflow, uh, which you guys are probably very uh, familiar with. Uh, it does require two appointments. The first appointment, uh, we, we do our tooth preparation and final impression, and then we send our impression to the lab. The lab fabricates the restoration for us, and then we do our cementation on the second appointment. Uh, so yeah, it does require two uh, appointments to do even do a simple indirect restoration. Uh, and let me just go into a little bit uh, more in depth of each uh, clinical step. So on the first appointment, we do our shade taking. Uh, and then the first thing, the reason why we do uh, shade taking as a first step is because otherwise the teeth will get dehydrated and of course the color will change. So that's why we do it first. And then the next step is to do the preliminary impression. Uh, we do the preliminary impression because later we need to fabricate the temporary resta restoration. So we need some sort of matrix. And then of course, uh, after that we do our tooth preparation and then we place our cord and take our final impression. And then of course, using the preliminary, impre preliminary impression that we fab uh, made, uh, we need to fabricate, uh, we use that to fabricate the temporary restoration. And then now we send all the in uh, impression to the lab and then the lab takes about a week or two to fabricate the uh, final restoration. And then we patient comes back into the second appointment. Uh, we numb the patient, remove the temporary restoration, remove the cement. Uh, and then of course we can finally try and our final restoration and then do our final cementation. Uh, so as you can see, there's many uh, steps uh, that are required uh, in the uh, conventional indirect restoration workflow. But if we are doing this uh, same day chair side, uh, we won't need to do a preliminary impression because we are not fabricating a temporary restoration. And of course we're not doing a, a temporary restoration so that step is gone. Now, uh, we don't have to send anything to the lab because the final restoration will be uh, fabricated chair side. And then of course, uh, because there's no temporary restoration, we don't have to remove it and clean up the cement. So uh, because of this, uh, we actually don't need a second appointment as the name uh, suggests, same day uh, dentistry. Uh, we only need one appointment to do our preparation and the final impression and the insertion of the final uh, restoration. So now uh, let's look at the uh, same day digital uh, chair side indirect restoration workflow. And as you can see, already see uh, the number of clinical steps that are required uh, to do the uh, same day chair side restoration is uh, much less. So I'll talk about each step in a little bit more detail. 
So first is shade taking. So just like the conventional workflow, we, the first thing that we need to do is uh, take a shade. And the way I like to take the shade is uh, I like to take, take the shade visually first using the, uh, either the classical shade guide or uh, the Vita 3D Master shade guide. And I do this under 5,500 Kelvin lighting. Uh, in the picture in the middle, you can see me use a light device that emits uh, 5,500 Kelvin light. Uh, and this helps me take an accurate shade. But in the picture on the right, as you can see, I'm not using that light device because I actually put, uh, the, I change the ceiling lights to 5,500 Kelvin so that I actually don't have to uh, hold that device when I'm taking the uh, shade. Another way of taking a shade is to use a spectrophotometer. Uh, well, generally, what I like to do is I like to uh, take three shade measurements, one on the cervical third, one on the middle third, and one on the incisal third. And after I take this shade, uh, this uh, I, I would actually compare it to the visual shade that that I have taken, and if it's very different, then I would actually go back to the sh uh, shade uh, guide and then check the shade again visually, uh, and then uh, make sure that it's same. Uh, and then from this reading, this is how I will determine what type of block that I will use uh, when, later when I'm milling uh, the restoration out. Another way, objective way of uh, measuring the shade is to use a uh, T-shade measurement tool in the TRIO system. So you can use this to do, uh, uh, measure the shade of the adjacent teeth or even the teeth that you're working on. And then using this, uh, you can fabricate a restoration using this shade. And of course, uh, it's not something that I recommend for uh, uh, doing in, in the anterior region just because uh, it's not 100% accurate. Uh, it's not as accurate as the spectrophotometer or even the visual shade taking. However, if for a posterior teeth like this, uh, you can actually get a quite a good uh, acceptable color match just because it's not in the aesthetic zone. Another way to communicate uh, uh, the color to the person who's fabricating the uh, final restoration for you, so that could be you, you yourself, or it could be the assistant, or if you do have an in-house lab technician, it can be your lab technician, is to take photography. And photography is really good because even though, let's say visually when we're taking the shade, let's say we said the tooth is a A2, uh, but uh, it never is exactly like the shade tab A2 because our teeth have, it can have uh, more translucency, it can have less translucency, it can have some white spots, it can have some uh, localized discoloration. So you wanna be able to transfer this information to the, uh, to the person who's making the final restoration for you. Uh, so that's why we do take a uh, photograph. And when you're taking a picture uh, using, let's say, a DSLR, you could use a ring flash or a twin flash. Uh, the disadvantage of, of course, using a ring flash is that you're going to get a lot of reflection back like you see on the picture. Uh, so there's a lot of white spots. And wherever that white spot is, you don't know what color it is in those areas. Uh, and if you compare that to a picture of a twin flash, uh, twin flash what you're going to notice is uh, we only have those reflections uh, happening on the line angles of the teeth. And Otherwise, I do see the whole color of the teeth uh, in these images. So uh, for shade taking, twin flash is better just because we don't get as much uh, reflection back. Uh, and uh, the settings that I use is uh, on the left-hand side. So another important information that we need to know uh, before we decide which type of block to use is to know what the stump shade is. Uh, if you have a darker stump shade, you wanna use a block that has, uh, that's a little bit more opaque uh, so that it can block out the color a little bit better. Uh, and of course, if you have a light tooth with some uh, translucency, then of course you wanna use a block that has more trans, that's more translucent. And of course, if the uh, stump shade is really, really dark, maybe that might not be a good case for uh, same day dentistry. So once we picked out the shade, the next step is to do the tooth preparation. And when we're doing tooth preparation for a CAT CAM uh, chair side dentistry, uh, we wanna make sure that we avoid having sharp corners, sharp edges, or any area that's too thin because uh, the way that the crown is or crown or the restoration is manufactured is by milling. So, uh, 
if you have any thin areas or any sharp areas, or the burr in the milling machine is not able to reproduce that detail very well. So you want to round off the edges like you see on the right hand side. Uh, and of course, you don't want any sharp edges anyways when you're doing ceramic restoration because uh, that can be a point of uh, uh, stress concentration and you, you're more likely to get fractures in your restorations if, it's, if you have sharp corners. And in terms of the uh, finish line, uh, you don't want uh, to do, want to have a uh, 90 degree shoulder. And also you don't want your margins to be too thin. So uh, for example, if your margin is 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 millimeters, uh, when the milling machine is milling your restoration out, there's a high chance that uh, the margin might chip during the milling process. So you want to avoid that. And what uh, the type of uh, margin that you want is either a rounded shoulder or a chamfer. So as you can see, uh, with same day dentistry, you are able to do these type of preparation and restoration. You're able to do inlays, onlays, and crowns. And when you do these type of preparations, you want to make sure that uh, all the margins are smooth like we discussed before. So these are all posterior restorations. Uh, what about anterior restorations? So if you have a case like on the lower uh, picture on the lower left, uh, you can see that it has a lot of colors in the two structures. So it has a lot of white, it has a lot of translucency and a lot of yellow. Uh, so to fabricate this uh, and try to shade match this using a monolithic chair side restoration, it would be almost impossible to do. So for something like this, uh, you would probably be better off sending it to a lab and have the lab do a layer type restoration. Now, if you look at the picture on the lower right side, uh, it's a root canal tooth. Uh, the number nine is a root canal tooth. And as you can see, it's a, uh, some shade is very, very dark. Uh, in cases like this, sometimes with a monolithic restoration uh, that we, uh, uh, that we uh, make using the chair side uh, milling machine, we might not be able to mask the stump shade completely. So the restoration might look gray. So in cases like this, you would want to use something that can uh, mask the color very well, such as uh, PFM or zirconia restoration. So in cases like this, you might also want to send, uh, send the case out to the lab uh, to have the lab make the restoration. But that doesn't mean that all anterior restorations has to be sent to the lab. Uh, so in a case like this, uh, um, by Blatz and Conejo, uh, if you look at the adjacent teeth uh, of number eight, you can notice that uh, the shade of those teeth are quite monochromatic and quite uniform. Uh, and they don't have uh, staining or they don't have white spots. So uh, in this case, they were able to match the color pretty well, I would say, uh, with uh, same day chair side uh, dentistry. So you can do, uh, you can use uh, chair side uh, dentistry and milling machine workflow to fabricate anterior cases too, but you just need to make sure that you pick your cases correctly. Now, at this point, uh, after you're done with your preparation, if your margins are all super, super gingival, then you're ready to do the final impression. However, if your margins are subgingival or, or equal gingival, then you want to place some cords to retract the uh, gingiva. So the first thing that I would do is I would place a single cord in first and I would evaluate if to see if I can see the margins everywhere. And if I can see the margin everywhere, I actually don't need to put the second cord in and I can do the scanning. Uh, one tip uh, here is when you're packing the cord, you don't want to pack the cord too deep. Then uh, what happens is you get a deep pocket in the area and the scanner has a hard time scanning that area. So when you're packing the cord, make sure you're not packing the cord too deep. And of course, with a single cord, if you're not able to see all the margins, then you would, I would use a double cord technique. Uh, and then with a the double cord technique too, when you're packing the second cord in, make sure you're not packing it too deep. Because if you do pack the cord too deep, then the first cord will go in deeper and then you'll get a deep pocket. So when, when with this deep pocket, your uh, intraoral scanner will have a hard time scanning this area. Uh, so you don't wanna do that. So uh, make sure you, you pack your cords uh, not too deep. Okay, so once the cords are all in, uh, now we're ready to do the final impression. So uh, here we're doing the intraoral scan of uh, the opposing arch first. 
And as you can see, the scanning is quite fast. So it was, the opposing arch was scanned in 22 seconds. And when I'm scanning the uh, preparation, uh, I like to use a zoom function, especially if uh, my preparation is quite uh, cervical or apical, uh, because with a zoom function, it act it'll actually zoom in, and then you're able to scan the deeper parts of uh, the uh, preparation. And also, uh, it's really good for capturing the interproximal contacts if you do use a zoom function. So when you're scanning the uh, preparation, uh, you just want to make sure that you capture all the margins really, really well. And of course, you want to capture the uh, interproximal contacts well as well. So in this case, uh, to scan uh, the upper uh, arch, uh, it took about uh, two minutes. And then now, basically what we do is we mark the preparation. And then we're ready to scan the bite. And generally, to scan the bite uh, it takes about five to 10 seconds. And in this case, it took about seven seconds. So as you can see, the whole process of uh, doing the intraoral scan uh, took less than three minutes in this case. So which is comp uh, comparable to uh, the traditional impression, or it, it might be even more faster than a traditional impression. So uh, it's very efficient, but is it accurate? Because we don't want to uh, uh, get a poor quality restoration just to be efficient. So Jonathan Ng and coworkers uh, compared the conventional workflow with the digital workflow. So for the conventional workflow, what they did was they took an impression of the tooth preparation uh, using PVS, and then they poured the cast, and they did the traditional wax up, and then uh, they pressed the pressed Emacs uh, to fabricate the crown. Uh, with a digital workflow, what they did was they scan, uh, use an intraoral scanner to scan the prep. And then from that uh, scan, you get a digital model. And then they did a digital wax up on that digital model. And then they milled uh, the restoration out of uh, Emacs CAD. And that's what you see on the left-hand uh, side. And then what they did was they uh, seeded these restorations on the tooth preparation, and then they checked to see how what the marginal gap was. So as you can see, both restoration, uh, both types of uh, workflow uh, were able to give clinically acceptable result. However, digital actually did much better. Uh, the, the marginal gap was smaller when uh, they used the digital workflow. So this means that um, even when we're going digital, uh, although it's more efficient, we're not necessarily sacrificing the quality. So it is accurate. So once we're done with the intraoral scanning, uh, now we're ready to fabricate the restoration. Uh, the software uh, I'm using here in this video is uh, Three Shape Design Studio. Uh, Jack will later go over uh, this software a little bit more in detail and do a live demonstration. But what I can tell you is that it's really user friendly and easy to, uh, it's able to detect the margin quite well. And also the auto design that it gives you is actually quite good. So uh, there's not a lot of changes that we have to make uh, with the auto design. And the video on the right shows uh, the, uh, the wax up being milled uh, using a ceramic material. And if you do have any questions regarding the design studio or milling machine, uh, Jack would be a good person to ask. So now we need to decide what type of material that we want to use uh, to do this same day dentistry. Uh, nowadays on the market, there's a lot of uh, resin ceramic hybrid uh, materials available, like you see on the left. Uh, however, how, how does that compare to lithium disilicate? So in this study, they compared the mechanical properties like flexural strengths, fracture toughness, and flexural modulus. And what they found was uh, lithium disilicate uh, did, had much better mechanical properties compared to all these uh, resin ceramic hybrids. And also, Clinically, uh, if you look at this study, the 10-year survival rate of these uh, Emacs uh, complete coverage restoration was 99.6%, which is really good. 
one downside of uh, use, uh, with downside of using uh, resin ceramic hybrids are that there's not a lot of long-term studies because long-term clinical studies because they're fairly new to the markets. So I, I'll say my recommendation would be wait for the studies to be done first. And then once they uh, are shown to have good results clinically, uh, then I think uh, that's when I will probably adapt using those type of materials. Of course, uh, with those materials, they do have their advantages because uh, they don't have to be crystallized. So after they're milled, all you need to do is polish it. And if you do want to stain them, you can apply a light cured stain. But of course, the disadvantage of those stains are that they uh, tend to wear out quite easily with brushing and fun normal function. So uh, the lithium disilicate uh, does need to be uh, crystallized uh, and stained and glazed. Uh, the staining uh, kit that I like to use is the Mio by Jensen. It really gives a natural shade. Uh, and uh, the, when, whenever you apply the staining, it does look like it's coming from the inside, uh, the restoration, not uh, just applied to, doesn't look like it's just applied to the superficial layer uh, of the restoration. So that's good. Uh, and when we're doing this, when we're uh, staining uh, our restoration, this would be a good time to put up the picture that we took during the shade taking uh, so that we can actually uh, match the translucency and the staining. And if there's any white spots, we're, uh, if we look at the picture and we can just kind of mimic those white spots on the restoration so that once the restoration goes in, it'll blend well with the adjacent teeth. So once the uh, restoration is fabricated, now we're ready to try it in inside the patient's mouth. So before we cement uh, or bond our restorations, there are a few things that we need to do. So first thing that I do is check the interproximal contact so that the, uh, to make sure the crown or the restoration is being fully seated. Uh, of course, you can use a uh, floss to check the interproximal contact, but I find that it's very difficult to tell if with a floss to see uh, to tell if the contact's too tight or too light. Uh, for example, if even if you have a small open contact, if the floss is thick enough, when you floss through the contact, it will snap, giving you a false sense that there is actual contact between the restoration and the adjacent tooth. Uh, However, uh, there isn't, right? So uh, what I like to use instead is to use, I like to use a shim stock, which has uh, eight, which is eight mi micron in thickness. So the way you use this is uh, you put it in between the restoration and the tooth, and then you seat the restoration, and then you pull on the shim stock. And if the uh, interproximal contact is open, uh, the shim stock will just pull right through without any resistance. Uh, if the contact is ideal, what you're going to notice is the shim stock will still pull through. However, uh, you're going to have some resistance when you're pulling the shim stock. Now, if the uh, interproximal contact's too tight, when you're pulling on it, it's not going to pull through. And if you pull harder, then uh, the shim stock will rip. So this is how you will know if uh, that the uh, interproximal contact's too heavy. However, shim stock does not mark the mark uh, the restoration. So you need a way of transferring uh, uh, where the high spot is. So that's why we use the articulating paper. So you do the same thing with articulating paper, and basically that will mark where the high spot is, and then you make adjustments uh, using a fine diamond, and then you would check it again with shim stock, and then you repeat this process until uh, the interproximal contact's good. And then the next thing, after you adjust the interproximal contacts, uh, the next thing that you're going to check is the fit. And the way you do that is uh, use the explore to see if there's uh, if the margins are all closed. Uh, if there is an open margin, then that can mean uh, one of two things. Uh, the mar it can mean that the margin is actually short, or it might mean that uh, there's a high spot on the inter internal surface of the restoration that's binding and preventing the uh, restoration from fully seating. So in cases like this, if uh, what we do, what I do is I use a fit checker to see where the high spot is and of course make adjustments as needed and then repeat this process until the restoration is fully seated. Now that the restoration is fully seated, uh, now you can uh, check the occlusion of uh, your uh, full coverage onlys and crowns if you want to. Uh, however, you cannot check the occlusion of veneers 
or inlays or partial coverage uh, on these, just because these restorations can have thin areas. And if you check the occlusion uh, at this point before you cement, uh, you can actually uh, get uh, some uh, fractures and chips on these type of restorations. So uh, with these, these type of restorations, you wanna uh, bond the restoration first and then check the occlusion after. So now that you have uh, tried the restoration in inside the mouth, now the restoration will be contaminated with saliva and blood. And if you did use the checker, it'll have uh, silicone residue on the surface. Uh, the way you clean this up is you can use hydrofluoric acid etch. Uh, so this will clean up the uh, contaminated surface, but also it'll etch the ceramics. So uh, it's better to do the hydrofluoric acid etching after you tried it inside the mouth. Uh, rather than doing the etching first and then trying it inside the patient's mouth because if you do the etching first and try the restoration inside the mouth, now you need to clean the surface. Uh, so that adds another step. So you want to do it after you try it inside the mouth. And of course, uh, you apply uh, say, uh, silane as a coupling agent for bonding. And when you're doing uh, the hydrofluoric acid etching, uh, one clinical tip that I can give you is uh, when you're hold, if you ever uh, held the restoration and did the etching uh, and rinsed it off with water while just holding it in your finger, uh, you might have dropped uh, the restoration. And, and it's very, because it gets really slippery. Uh, so one tip that I can share with you is, uh, one product that I can share with you is uh, Veneer Me by Smiline. So basically what this, uh, uh, tool does is you can put your restoration in and then you can cover it with a mesh. Now you're not concerned when you're rinsing uh, with water that the restoration will drop into the sink and fracture or get lost, right? So uh, this, I, this I find really, really helped us. Now that all the restoration uh, has, now that the restoration has been adjusted and uh, treated, now we're ready for the final cementation. Uh, so uh, when we're doing the final cementation, uh, there are a couple of uh, uh, options uh, for cements. If the crown, if you're doing a crown, and if it does have, if the crown has adequate retention form and resistance form, and if the uh, occlusal thickness is quite adequate, uh, then you can use a self-adhesive resin cement like Relyx Unisem 2. Uh, because we're not really uh, relying on bonding and uh, it, this type of cement is much easier to clean than the uh, total etch resin cement. However, if your uh, preparation is lacking uh, retention or resistance form and or if the restoration is thin and you're worried that the restoration will break, uh, you, you want to bond the restoration. So you, what you would use is you would use a total etch resin cement like Relyx Ultimate. And of course, for your inlays and onlays, uh, because we're not relying on mechanical retention, uh, we will bond these type of restorations too. But the disadvantage of this type of rest, uh, cement is that they're very difficult to clean up and it's much more technique sensitive. So isolation is very, very important if you are bonding these type of restorations. So of course, one way of uh, isolating the area is to use a uh, rubber dam. Uh, or alternatively, you can use the opter gate with uh, cotton rolls and dry angles. Okay. Another thing that you want to avoid is you don't want uh, the cement to get onto the adjacent teeth because it can be really, really hard to remove the uh, cement, excess cement. Uh, so in cases like this, when we're uh, uh, bonding the restoration, uh, what I like to do is I like to isolate uh, the adjacent teeth with uh, Teflon tape. Uh, however, when you are buying uh, Teflon tape, make sure that it's a thin one uh, because if you get a thick Teflon tape, when you're, seating, uh, when you're seating the restoration, the restoration might not actually seat all the way because of that thickness. And of course, for our crowns and uh, full coverage on uh, we can just uh, transfer that restoration uh, with cement uh, inside the mouth using our uh, fingers. Uh, but of course, with inlays or par partial coverage onlays, we're not able to do that. So we need some sort of uh, device to transfer that into the mouth. Uh, and what we can use is we can use an optra stick. So basically, uh, you uh, put the optra stick on the occlusal surfaces uh, and it sticks to the restoration and then you put your, apply your cement, and then you transfer that into the patient's mouth. Alternatively, if you do not want to buy an uh, optrastic, well, what you can do is you can use a full 
Wobble composite, uh, put a drop of Wobble composite onto the occlusal surfaces, surface of the restoration far away from the margins, and then you can stick a uh, uh, micro brush to the flowable composite and cure it, and then now you created your own uh, off chest stick. So now uh, I'll just go over the uh, uh, step by step procedure of the final cementation. So again, first thing that we're going to check is we're going to check the interproximal contacts first using shim stock, and then uh, if it's high or if it's too tight, then we're going to use uh, articulating paper and then make adjustments using the fine diamond. And of course, you're going to we're going to polish our adjustments uh, using a porcelain polisher. And then we're going to check the fit using the Explorer. So if the fit is good, uh, at this point, you can uh, check the occlusion if you want, or uh, you're, we, or we can uh, be, get ready to cement the restoration. So we would do the hydrofluoric acid etching and then apply uh, silane as a coupling agent. So the, your restoration now is ready to be bonded. Now, uh, for, now we need to get our tooth ready uh, for uh, bonding. So like I said before, I, I isolate the adjacent teeth using Teflon tape because I don't want any cement going on to the adjacent teeth. And then I uh, use, utilize uh, uh, selective uh, etching techniques where I only etch the enamel using phosphoric acid for uh, 15 seconds. And then of course I rinse the etch off and then I apply the bonding agent. Now, uh, one thing that you want to avoid is you don't want to cure this bonding agent before you seat your restoration because uh, the bonding agent can actually add thickness to it. So uh, what I do is uh, I uh, air thin it after I apply the bonding agent and then I uh, apply the cement into the restoration and then I seat the restoration uh, and then of course clean up the excess cement and then cure it. Uh, so one concern that you might have is uh, oh, how is the light going to reach uh, to the deeper part of the uh, bonding agent right where a uh, deeper part of the preparation where the bonding agent is. So you're concerned that uh, the bonding agent might not set completely. Uh, however we don't have to worry about this because uh, the, uh, the dual cure uh, resin cement that we use has a uh, activator for the bonding agent so that chemically the bonding agent will set if we do use this uh, cement. After we cement it, there's going to be lots of excess cement. I like to uh, remove majority of the excess cement using the micro brush. Uh, and then, of course, uh, and then after I remove majority of the excess cement with a micro brush, I like to use a gum stimulator. The gum stimulator is really nice to remove. Uh, it, it removes uh, excess cement very cleanly on two surfaces. And another good thing is because it's very pointy, I can actually get into the interproximal areas and clean the interproximals really well. And because it's soft and it's rubber, uh, it doesn't uh, promote bleeding uh, as long as the gums are not inflamed. So this is really good because majority of the uh, uh, excess cement will be removed from the interproximal. So the amount of uh, excess cement that you have to remove with floss is much reduced. Uh, because always with flossing, uh, I do get a little nervous because it can cause bleeding in the area. And also, uh, it, your restoration can move when we're trying to floss. So uh, I like to minimize the amount of excess cement that uh, needs to be removed with flossing. So that's why I like to use a gum stimulator. And then, of course, after uh, all the excess cements are removed, then uh, we tack here the restoration in place and then apply glycerin uh, all around the margin so that uh, we don't get any uh, oxygen inhibited layer. And then I do my uh, curing. And at this point, I clean up uh, all the excess cement uh, that's any excess cement that's remaining. And at this point, we're now we're ready to adjust the occlusion. The way I like to adjust my occlusion is I check my uh, check the MIP first uh, with the articulating paper and then see where it's touching and then I'll use a shim stock to see if all the teeth uh, are holding the shim stock so uh, we want all the teeth to hold the shim stock and the restoration that you just put in as well uh, but of course if you're only if only the restoration is holding the shim stock and if the adjacent teeth are not holding the shim stock that means that uh, the restoration is too high in occlusion so of course we would adjust it uh, and then of course if the adjacent teeth are holding shim stock and if your restoration is and that means that the occlusion is too light on your restoration so, uh, of course, now already the restoration is cemented. So if this happens, there's not much you can do at this point. So uh, what I like to do is when I do my design, uh, uh, when I design the restoration, I like to make the uh, occlusion, of course, perfect. But if I have to 
choose between a little high or little low, then I'll choose little high. So just because I can adjust it so that uh, it has a positive contact. Once the MIP is adjusted, now I can check for excursions. Uh, so what I do is I get the patient to bite on the red side of the paper and then get them to grind side to side. And then I flip it and then I tell them to bite uh, up and down on the black side. So that will check the MIP. Now, basically what I do is uh, for the posterior restoration is uh, any red mark that's not overlapped with the black mark is, uh, uh, is an interference. So I, I do the adjustments, and then of course I check it again. So I do the same thing uh, with the red paper, I tell them to grind side to side, and then with the black paper, I tell them to bite up and down. And I do repeat this process until there's no uh, red marks left uh, that's not uh, overlapped with the black mark. Then I know that all their interferences are gone. Uh, one interesting that I noticed in, on this picture is that if you look at the canine, uh, what, you're no what you'll notice is initially the canine is guiding the lower jaw, and then Eventually, it's, uh, it's picked up by the, uh, the restoration that we just put in, and then it goes back to the canine on the picture on the left. But after the adjustment, what you're going to notice is throughout the whole uh, excursion, uh, the canine's guiding the lower jaw. So I thought that was kind of interesting. So as you saw, with the digital workflow, the clinical steps, uh, number of steps has been reduced. Uh, and... Uh, so, so, so it, it is a much more, I feel it's a much more smoother experience uh, for uh, the dentist and also for the patient as well. And another benefit that we get uh, for the patient is that uh, rather than having two appointments, they can get everything done in one appointment uh, and get uh, same or similar results to a lab fabricated restoration, which I think is really, really good. So now uh, Jack will go, uh, take over and he's gonna go over the CAD CAM part more in detail and share uh, and do a live demonstration of the design studio and talk about some milling machine as well. Uh, thank you very much. Hello everyone. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Park. Uh, it was a very nice presentation and then I hope it's very helpful for everyone too. So we are talking about the in-house uh, fabrication of the crown workflow today. Start with the trias and then go over with the design software, which is a design studio from 3Shape. And also we're gonna uh, show you about the, um, the Roland DG Shape DWX 42W wet, uh, which is for making a, a glass ceramic or kind of resin crown mill out from the in-house. So before I just go over the presentation, my presentation, I just wanna open just one 3D view from the three shape TRIA scan file. I just wanna introduce, we already know about the TRIA scanner, how it's good, how fast, how it's accurate, but I just wanna show you guys what happened behind our monitor. So first thing we know all that like nice color scan and we can see the, all the detail. But once you change that as a, like a monochrome, we can see more better detail, even we can see the margins, right? So that is like technology from the three shape. And plus, we know that this part, plus if I change this as a, like a wireframe view, what's gonna happen? So can you see that like around practice area? we can see more detail, high resolution, more small polygons, which is a, uh, uh, the materials for the 3D files. So this is what uh, the technologies, uh, the 3 shape make the very accurate scan images. And also we can expect nice bit of our restoration. So uh, after we scanned with the TRIA done, what's gonna happen is uh, we can mill it, but before we mill, what we have to do we have to do the design, right? So this is a one of page uh, of the uh, design studio right after the trio scan. So trios and design studio from the three shape. This is like one uh, package software. After scan, we can go over design right away. So before we get into design right after scan, we can quickly check with like a clearance check. I just click the clearance button. We can see the practice to the uh, opposing tooth, uh, we have a proper thickness and space for the crown or not. We can see right away with the color map. If need some adjust, we can go back to the scan, grind a little bit, only capture that spot, and then we can make it correct. So once scan is done, we can just get into design right away. So let me open up the design page. So once we get into design for the first step, system, 
want to ask us to draw the margin. So we have like a magician, like a wizard tool. Once we click on the margin, system detect margin automatically. And also we can modify if you like it. So what I want to tell you is when we draw the margin, when we draw the margin, what happened behind us, what happened behind the monitor is system already start to do the design. So once you get a margin, and if you go to the next step, software detect the nice insertion direction, which is for minimal undercut. So software get the direction automatically. And what's happened, if I go to next step, let me just click the next. Software already, already done the design. So 3Shape Design Studio has an automatic design function. So when we draw the margin, system start the design automatically, find out the contact first, and make a right size, and also make a correct occlusion. So this is a computer design. So the contact tightness, occlusion space, which you like. Like some doctor like to have like little tight contact. Some doctor want to go with a light occlusion, out of occlusion. So every setting and offset can be preset for, uh, for your taste. So we can make the preset for you. And let me say, uh, I like the uh, auto design, but if we have some pre-preparation tools before we prep. If a patient already have a good tools, but some reason if you need to make the crown, we can scan uh, the tools before the prep. So we call the pre-preparation scan. If we have that, even we have auto design here, what we can do it is just one touch click, like a mouth to pre-preparation. If you click that system do read pre-preparation tools images, and then match exactly same copy. So that saved time and we can design the perfectly same as like a patient's before practice. So the design, as you can see, is just like one click, make it work. And we have actually a lot more features. I cannot explain all today, but at least if you have a pre-preparation, yes, we can make a morph copy. And then for interior to design, like let me say one single interior, number eight or nine, seven or 10, six and 11, we have mirror copy tool too. So that make very nice symmetrically same design, we can make it work, okay? And once the design is done, if the design, our design hitting somewhere or thin somewhere or too thin or too, too bulky or too much contact, on the neighbor or occlusion, always it will giving us some notification. So we can just go back and fix, or we can just accept it and we can go next step. So good point is scan with the trias, design with the design studio, and then the next step automatically system do auto nesting, auto nesting our design file into the our blank like this. So this. The fixation is exactly same as uh, the DG shape from the Roland uh, DWX 42W wet machine. So system do automatically align and then creating pin on the highest contour position. And then we can choose our block, like the, which size you have and like standard or high definition, we can set it up. A uh, little faster with less anatomy or more uh, high definition, it literally take a little long time to mill. So once you set it up done, if we click produce, what's gonna happen is here. So we saw the short video from the uh, Dr. Parks and once it started, system do start automatically mill with a DWX 42W wet. So the good point with this machine is uh, Roland machine has a three different burr, not one or not just two, three different burr size, which meaning is we can expect very nice detail and good anatomies too. So if we go to the next page, let me just show you here. So even with a thin veneer design, yes, we can mill out very stable without any like broken or chipping. And the next thing, we're using different sides of the board for roughing, finishing, and detail. We can see the nice occlusion anatomy detail. And also, we can make accurate fit too.
So I have a good news for everyone uh, with Design Studio function uh, software, uh, the Screen Crown, which with a Titan base is coming. So still waiting for API approval in the United States, but I hope we can get it soon. That meaning is in chair side, one day, like a same day crown with a glass ceramic, we can make as a crown and also a veneer plus screen crown with a tiny base too. So we can see the very nice fit between the milled glass ceramic, this is not zirconia, milled glass ceramic with titanium base, okay? So what's good with in-house same day glass ceramic workflow is finishing is easier than the other material. Once the meal is done, we can use just like multiple, just two to three burr and then disc to cut it out the pin and then grind out the, uh, the pin area. And probably you guys already saw that before, we can just push it in the, uh, the firing peg, we call it a putty or firing peg, push it in, put the pin in there. If I have like overflowing the material, we can use a brush with the water to clean out. Okay, then make sure the material inside of the crown well with a pin. And easily we can just spray out for the glazing or we can just brushing that too. So let me say the molar, premolar, which is not super need to special staining or characterization. Uh, we don't really need to using that, but if we need that, we can use uh, some stain uh, paste too. So Dr. Park, uh, he using a, like a meal, and then we're, I'm using a, the GC luster paste, both of them works very nice. So external, extra stain, if you need, yes, we can do any time. Even we can do uh, at the same time of the, when you do the glaze, like a glazing paste, uh, we can just apply that thing first, and then we can just do a little stain on uh, top of there, and then firing one time, and we can have the crown. So this is like a final uh, result of the, all the glass ceramic, uh, the left one. I made one just by my, myself recently. Uh, that one, as I just explained, we have the function in the design studio, which is for mirror copy, okay? My, my face is not really mirror the symmetrically same, but the crown design, yes, three shape made it. And then on the right side, this is one of our rear case from our uh, my doctor. He scan it and he sent it scan file because a uh, little hard to design all. And it helped the design and he milled it all and it just finished all uh, Dr. Self. So the workflow is not at all. And then the time wise scan about maybe five minutes, under five minutes. Design wise, yes, two to three minutes. Milling time, 25 to 30 minutes. And then the final firing about the 30 minute. So the total time around an hour, little over an hour, you can make your own crown in house. Okay. So technologies, yes, from the three shape machines, yes, uh, the roll and digi shape, all the support and training, yes, 3D Biocad, we are here for you. Okay. So thank you very much. And then I'm going to uh, turn my mic uh, to John, uh, who's going to explain about the nice promotion and a deal for you. So don't missing it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Good evening, everyone. First of all, on behalf of the entire team at 3D BioCAD, I would like to express my um, sincere gratitude for your participation tonight. Some may say TRIO's scanners are pricey and have annual subscription. Yes, it is true. But we need to consider a few things to understand why these top-notch performance scanners paired with very powerful software are still very popular. American Dental Association did a research and compared the many intro scanners and determined TRIOS is the most accurate and a consistent scanner, which means you can expect predictable outcomes. Prosthesis will fit extremely well, and you can minimize adjustment and remakes, thus reduce chair time. 3Shape offers many in-house production studio apps, such as Design Studio, Implant Studio, Clear Aligner Studio, Splint Studio, as well as Indirect Bonding Studios. 
With these studio apps, you can establish in-house workflow for your appliances and restoration to save cost and time. You also can achieve better patient engagement and satisfaction with patient excitement apps. For example, smile design and patient monitoring for effective treatment dialogue and acceptance. By the way, these apps were part of software updates without any additional cost to users. Okay then, what about the annual subscription? With the annual subscription, 3Shape and 3D BioCAD are committed to provide attentive support and continuous software development and updates. For Trio's lineup, currently 3Shape offers Trio's 3 and Trio's 4. Either Trio's 4 or 3 that you can have it as a pod configuration or move plus configuration, and you can have it as a wired version or wireless version. Due to time constraint tonight that we may not be able to describe different trios configuration, but please reach out to us so we can go over with you. Now let's talk about some exciting stuff. These are current Q4 promotions. 50% off on trios Design Studio for chair-side milling solution, which Dr. Park and Jack just demonstrated for you. All Trios 4, either Pod or Move Plus, is wireless scanner combined with the wired kit for your flexibility. This promotion offers two additional years of a warranty and express replacement service. I just mentioned express replacement services. What is it? If the scanner is malfunctioning during this warranty period, you will get the replacement unit within a day or two to minimize your downtime. Also, there's a $4,000 manufacturer rebate and 3D BioCAD exclusive discount available. This Trios 3 wireless certified refurbished package is quite attractive. You could save almost $20,000 compared to the brand new setup. This package comes with a three shape approved laptop with three years of warranty and replacement service for you to have a peace of mind. This promotion is for existing Trios users looking to add an additional scanner or for new customers looking to buy two or more. This promotion offers two additional years of subscription included for the additional scanner. Potential total savings by combining different promotions, rebate and discount could be more than $12,000 depending upon which scanner you choose. Lastly, trade up and trade in program is currently available. For any questions on scanners, features, software, pricing and promotion, please contact us. One of our specialists shall answer and assist you in choosing the right solution. Again, thank you very much for investing your precious time tonight. Here's Michelle. Thanks, John, Jack, and uh, Dr. Park. I think now we're just going to answer any questions. I know I mentioned the chat before, but um, the chat is disabled, so please, the Q&A. Uh, we have one question here, and I'll just kick it off and start, um, whether it's you, Jack, who wants to answer this or Dr. Park. The question is, is the auto crown design and dental system complete? Or is it only on Trios Design Studio? 
Yeah, I can. I think I can answer that. So the design studio, which we just saw today, yes, we have auto design crown function there, and also dental system, which is the laboratory design software version from the three shape. Of course, yes, we have there because the dental system is more bigger and is stronger. Many options, many tools, many modules there, but that's for laboratory one. So of course you can have both of one, uh, whatever you like. But yes, uh, dental system include all kind of feature which Design Studio has. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Do we have any other questions? Again, if you do have questions, please pop them in the Q and A, um, and we'll answer them live here. Uh, there's a question here. How much is the milling unit? I, you can do that. <laughs> Okay, that, that, uh, Roland DWX 42W uh, manufactured uh, manufactured MSRP is at 29,445. It comes with uh, mil, uh, the CAM software. So, but then again, you know, we we'll, uh, should be able to give you some substantial discount when you contact us. Yeah, so maybe I can, I can tell just one more thing, Doctor. Uh, as we know, uh, we know the one brand which is a very famous uh, like in-house glass ceramic mill and a workflow. Uh, we know like over like $150,000 something like that for full kit, but now is a 2020 is not gonna happen like that. So cost wise, yeah, it's a lot under than that. So uh, the John is gonna uh, give it a nice deal. And then for all, uh, please uh, keep in your mind uh, is is a different word. So technologies are different, costs are different, and then the user friendly system and the machines are easy to maintenance. That's what I want to tell you guys. Okay. Thank you. Okay, one more. Uh, does the forty two W have a fast mill setting? Mm -hmm. Any way to mill closer to mm -hmm. the Seric speed? Yeah. So let me tell you about that. Yeah, I'm Jack to Jack Bell. <laughs> so. <laughs> The, the milling unit about the 42W wet, uh, milling time, let me say, that is a take longer than CEREC. CEREC machine is about maybe 15 minutes around it because that machine using two bird milling like that, but the uh, rolling machine, we're using three bird for more detail and the, from this, uh, the occluding and the cavity work. So time-wise, yeah, it may really take longer, but the accuracy-wise and the detail-wise, yes, 42W wet is very nice. And Another question, how accurate is the bite registration? Bite registration about that, uh, the like rear bite registration or the trios bite registration scan? Uh, from the scanner. From the scan, yeah, from the scanner, bite registration, we called it just like a bite scan, right? After we scan the lower and upper and a bite. So that the bite alignment which is uh, automatically done by the system right after scan you bite system to automatically align up and lower but that accuracy wise trio scanner has about the six micron accuracies yes accuracy numbers are there but if you have experience which is a bite is a little off or like too much overlapped or some off one side it could happen when the scan in the chair side if you don't scan the bite long enough which is happen like scan only two molar and the system do automatic align and we just trust that. But I just want to say, don't trust that because we should take at least molar to canine, molar to canine, and it will make you the correct and very nice accurate bite scan and registration and align the work too. But if a little off on the chair side, on the design software, which is like a laboratory from the three shape one, name is dental system, we have the function for correction of bite, which is making a maximize touching. Okay. And uh, we have, mm -hmm. Yeah, another question here. Um, if someone was to purchase with 3D BioCAD and did the Roland Mill, Mm -hmm. um, would their assistants be trained? How do you talk about the training from start to finish? Yeah, so from the 3D BioCAD, if we purchase from us, we are starting the, uh, the training from the trio scan, how we scan well and the design software, how we design well and how to mill and how to finish. We're gonna cover from start to the end. Uh, we could be there to like inside training, but for COVID issue. So if you 
have some issue, we have a special training uh, way. We call it like a, a live web training. We're gonna send like web cameras and everything for web uh, the training kit. We can just set it up the camera. We can see each other, and we're gonna do live web training. So, for example, here is our three Dubai kit training room. We can see the scanner there, and then even the unit chair there. We're gonna do live uh, the camera videoing uh, training too. Uh, a question, another question here. Thanks, Jack, for, for answering that. Yeah. Uh, can 3D BioCAD use the DIO DIO, scan? Yeah, DIO, DIO implant scan body. Yes, uh, the can 3D BioCAD use the DIO scan body? Oh, yeah, that, that portion, actually, I need to answer like this. Um, the DIO scan body, which meaning is DIO implant company's scan body, so that meaning is like if the DO implant company share that there's an implant library, like a CAD library with the scan body information to the three shape, yes, we can using it. And then as we know, three shape is the most biggest software company and scanner company for the laboratory side. So every implant company has a library with a three shape. So three shape and exocad, yes, you can. Okay. Uh, can Roland Milling do custom abutments? Uh, if you ask about the titanium custom abutment, my answer is so far, not yet, because that machine which we saw with the video is a uh, premature four milling glass ceramic or the heart region. Uh, Roland has a dry machine which can mill zirconia, PMMA, wax, but not titanium yet. But if you're thinking about the, if okay with the Thai base with the zirconia hybrid abutment, yes, we can do with the Roland dry machine, not wet machine. I just want to add one, real, uh, one thing real quick, that Roland 42W, that it has a capability uh, called the Customer Abutment Milling Kit, mm -hmm. that it is available with the different tools and things like that. So uh, I just want to keep you updated that it is oh. available for now. For now. Yes. That's good news. That's good news. <laughs> that's good so news. So good news for this yeah, evening. That's good news. <laughs> that's uh, good. Mm -hmm. One another question here: Can the three D design app used for designing bridges and complicated cases? The complicated case, uh, let me say, uh, is it better to have a these uh, uh, the dental system instead of the design studio because studio series is pretty much for clinical use, which is a uh, easy and fast and quick. Which meaning is uh, the nice workflow can be designed quickly, but uh, for complicated case, which is like uh, for like uh, implant restoration or something has to be stacking each other or some big unit of the bridge with like a gum tissue, something like that. Uh, the software from the uh, three shape, the name is a dental system is better than design studio. Uh, another question here, and mm -hmm. it ties right into what you just answered. Is there any feature that Trios Design Studio has that mm -hmm. dental system doesn't have? Uh, to me, uh, personally, not really, because again, the dental system is a more bigger version and a heavier version, even price is a little more expensive. So bigger version of that the design studio. So again, the dental system is for uh, like a professional laboratory use, and then design studio is for clinical use. So function wise, yes, dental system has all the function which uh, in the design studio. So that, there's no very special feature uh, in the design studio com uh, versus with a dental system. But, oh, just one thing, but one thing, the very big difference is the design studio has ability to connection to your in cleaning mill. Dental system doesn't have that. But design studio, if you uh, design with the design studio from the trio scan, you just, we saw that just click the produce one time, the calculation for the mill and then sending the NC file to the milling machine directly is possible. Dental system, we have to design and mill separately. Uh, is dental system from three shape trios? Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we are three shape people. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I think that's all the questions for now. Uh, just give everyone one more minute to see if they want to ask any last minute questions. Um, and if anyone just wants to stay on the line and, and ask us questions separately, we'll stay on the line as well for another uh, four minutes. Okay.
again. Okay. Any news from Three Shape Pipeline? Uh, we have a total tech week coming up October uh, 20th. Uh, sign up for that. That's on our Three Shape website. So if you want to see any news and uh, the latest and greatest, sign up for our Total Tech Week. How how user friendly is your stuff? Yeah. So uh, the software which we just saw, um, the Design Studio, the user friendly wise Studio series from this uh, the Three Shape, which is like a Design Studio for the Crown Design and the Implant Studio for a Surgical Guide and the Spleen Studio for the Night Guard Design, compared with like Exocad or any other system Studio series, which is a uh, all that connected with the Trias right after scan right after scan we can just design right away so that's number one benefit and then number two the uh the tools like a designing tools and the function of the like options and then also the view and the or rotations are all like uh, uh the one package which meaning is once you do design with your three shape trios plus design studio or some other studio series you don't have to learn again the tools and then functions and then rotation and something like that so that the friendly wise if you know the how using trios well meaning is your studio apps gonna work very friendly with you and then of course it's a fast and easy and then also the automations like a design, crown design automation, even like a night guard design, spleen studio automation tool that too. So it will make you easy to design yourself. Okay, great. Okay. I think we've answered all the questions. Uh, mm -hmm. We will be sending the recording out to everyone who was on tonight and have registered for this webinar, as well as sending you our next webinar that we're hosting on November 5th. So just check your email and more information to come. Thank you all for joining this evening. Mm -hmm.